Okay, so this could be the final episode of me learning how to set up a bow and Josh making me do all the work. It's taken, we only have an hour once a week, every week, and some weeks I'm out of town, he's out of town. So this week like number six. So I've had this bow in hand for six weeks. It's a Hoyt Ultra. I have the RX3 30 inch axle to axle. The bow shoots awesome. I just, Josh thinks this one will shoot better for me and I'm greedy. I want to shoot the best I can absolutely shoot. I want the most for forgiveness in a bow. And I think the angle, four more inches, I'm, I won't have to tip my head so much to get into that peep. And that's really what I'm looking forward to. So we threw a Hamski rest on last time, and that's the Trinity. Mm -hmm. uh, we have his strings in-house from the stretcher to the bow. Uh, what else did we put? We got a D-loop on there. Put the speed knocks on. Speed knocks, which was, Kind of a pain in the ass, but good. And a lot of people are asking on YouTube, well, how'd you know where to put? Again, like I said in the video, say it again, we matched it to Hoyt's factory strings. Yeah. That's their job to figure out where to put speed knocks, not ours. So I don't know how to tell you guys how to do that on your own. Uh, and Josh was talking about in the video how he used to have to experiment with the chronograph, manipulating where to put them and to find the sweet spot. We don't have to do that. We just have to match factory. So today, we're gonna do some things for time. We'll bring you along. All right, well, we're gonna wanna set your, your wheeling first and what you're hoping for here. What you're trying to do when you get the boat drawn back is to have this cam pointed straight at this cam. And in order to do that, you have to set the wheeling or the orientation and how much pitch is on the cam here. And what we're trying to do is line it up kind of off to this side at rest because as you draw the bow back the cable guard because it isn't very flexible and creates torque will pull the cam over at draw we don't have a way to measure it at draw so we have to kind of guess it a little bit at rest to find a decent starting point so I'm going to put my little laser on here and run it back up to the cam side and find out where we're pointed at so right now that's actually a pretty decent starting point for this bow so we're probably going to leave that alone but how we would adjust that, I'll just show you real quick. We're trying to make that... If we're trying to make this cam go like this direction, you would take the cable off and shorten the cable on that one side a little bit. And that pushes the cam that way. Same thing on the other side. Shorten this guy. Puts the cam right back to where it was for lean. And that's how you set wheel lean. We're gonna readjust that again when we actually start putting the bow through paper to see what it looks like. But that's basically how you make a wheeling adjustment. Now on to timing the bow. So you gotta have a draw board in order to time your bow correctly. You can do it with your fingers, but it's hard to look at it. I'll try to take this tag off here. But this is our draw board. And basically all it does is mimic the ability to pull the bow back and not have to hang on to it while you do it. What coffee are you drinking? Uh, that's just some stuff I bought at the store. I'm not even sure what kind it is. Mm. Smell good? Mm. I already had a lot of coffee. I'm good. Yeah, it doesn't have nearly enough. So I'm drawing it all the way back. Just eyeball on each cam. Yeah. See, these little rubber pieces are your stops. Yep. And your cables have to touch those at the same time. So we're gonna pull it back to where it stops, and now we're touching on the bottom, and we're not quite touching on the top. Can you get a shot of that and that? Yeah. So should you come on come over? Come to this side. You in there tight? Hold for five seconds at least for my editing. Okay, and look at the other one. Now it's not touching up there. Yeah. Okay, so what you see there basically means that this cable is a little too short, so we need to press the bow and untwist this cable a twist and then put it back in the draw board again and check and see if they're hitting at the same time or not. So untwisting will make the, a little okay, longer. A little longer. If you will twist up the cable, it'll make it a little shorter. Okay. But um, knowing that um, whichever one's hitting the stop first is longer. Okay. And yeah, I've had to play with that and figure it out. Make sure we're not on the there. Be on. Yep. There you go. Okay. So we're going to untwist this guy one twist and you can look at your string and see which way it's twisted. Yep. And just untwist it one twist. Put it back on. You did a full? Yeah. I don't like doing halves. 
because you're rebending the serving, so it's okay. like it takes five shots for it to settle back out. So whatever you see the first time, probably not what you're going to see the next time. That's a pro tip. Yeah. So I try to do single twists, and if I need a half, I'll take it out of the yolks because you can, they won't don't have the serving in them. All right, let's do this again. How's that 80 pounds? Oh, is it 80 pounds? Did yeah. You oh. Okay, so <laughs> now you go look at it. Should be exactly touching and exactly touching here. All right, so now we got good timing on our bow. We can officially start putting this bow through paper and see so what it looks we like. We did wheeling. Yeah. We did timing. Yeah. Now through paper, mm -hmm. then a peep. Yeah, and if we uh, start shooting it through paper and don't get a, a clean tear left or right, we'll probably play with this wheelie in it a little bit and okay. we can film what that is and why. Okay. All right, let's Here she is. Good shot. Hope she doesn't like blow up or anything. I think we'll be all right. That's definitely 80 pounds. of the arrow went through right there it's just a tiny bit high and left of the exact center of the hole so we're going to make a couple of small adjustments to try to straighten that out a little bit but all in all that's pretty close for a first shot all right so let's drop the arrow rest down just a tiny bit loosen that up and micro drive that little sucker there we go so we'll turn that knob just a little bit and because I like where our arrow rest is, I'm actually going to play with the wheel aim a little bit and try to change that. Would a, would a guy, like a do-it-yourself guy, probably mess with the rest too much? Uh, yeah, if you don't have a press, I mean, you got to have a press to be able to adjust your wheel aim. Yeah. Uh, a do-it-yourself guy is just going to move his rest, and then you're going to end up with, you're going to look down your bow, and it's going to look like your rest is way to the left or way to the right of where the middle kind of looks like. Got it. So if you look at where your cams orientate and try to match it up with the riser visually, it will look like it's pointed off to the side. Let's say you're paying full retail. Yeah. And you want this setup right here. You want to press and you want a draw board. <laughs> what would it cost to get yourself this for your home uh, setup? Like a last chance easy green and a last chance draw board because this is our own little homemade thing. Yeah. Um, they, you're about $600. for Total? Yeah, for a green Yeah. with bow press and a draw board. Now it's not a, a vise or any leveling jigs or anything like that, but just to be able to compress your bow and then check the draw, that's what you'd need, okay. $600. Cool. So. so now, because we got that point left, I'm gonna actually shorten this guy a little bit, which should bring that back in a little. So we're gonna give one twist to here, like that. And just this side, actually, hang on. So you tighten it. I tighten this one, and then I'm gonna loosen this one a half. Just a half? Yeah, because we're trying to keep the timing the same. I actually did yeah. a half, not a whole. Okay. So by taking one and tightening here a half and loosening here a half, yep. the length of the cable is still the same. Do we have to check the in no, a draw board yet? because the length of the cable is still the same. Got it. If we had just twisted up one side and didn't uh, take away from the other side, right. then yeah, you probably change the length. Then you put it in the draw board. Okay. Readjust the control cable because it's going to be off a little bit. So This is going to be a nightmare when I start doing this on my own. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the, the do-it-yourself kind of guy. Yeah, you, don't, you gotta learn. You got you gotta learn and it's good to know these things to make an, an exact, you know, a, a small little adjustment. Um, putting a whole thing together by yourself and trying to tune it in time might yep. be a little much for the home guy. Yep. But to be able to make a small fix on his bow it, when your, you know, string or cable stretches or whatnot is, is totally practical for the individual, assuming they have access to a bow press. There you go. And that's right in the middle of the fletching. That's right where you want it. Okay, so now the bow's synced, timing, yeah. good. Yeah. How many arrows do I put through this before I, I should probably check everything again? Uh, honestly, with uh, with our strings, you shouldn't have to. Like okay. it should be a one shot deal. Um, standard stuff. Like if you're if you're not getting what we build. Like me um, three years ago, running those other strings, I was here every two months. Yeah. And I which, shoot year round. Yeah, which you know you shoot a lot. So you're, you're putting a little more abuse on your stuff. You're gonna get more give from a set that gives than yeah. the average person. Yeah. Uh, but because those came right out of the stretcher, went right on the bow, there's no chance for it to recompress. You don't have to put the traditional 50 to 100 arrows through your bow and then recheck everything. Yeah. It's not going to change. Legit. So. Peepage? Yeah, peep time. 
What do you think about my quarter inch versus three sixteenths? Well, on a longer axle to axle bow, I would probably go with a smaller uh, smaller peep because it's going to be closer to your eye, so it's going to look bigger. Ooh. So whereas your RX three is a little shorter axle to axle, yeah. the string angle coming off of your face is going at a steeper angle, so yeah. that when you hit your natural position, yep. the peep's actually farther away from your eyeball. Okay. So you need a bigger peep okay. on a shorter axle to axle bow. Probably longer not. axle to axle bow, you usually have a little smaller peep simply because it's closer to your eye. Okay. So we'll put a 3 sixteenths in there to start and see how it looks. <clears throat> so when setting a peep, you actually want to draw it back a few times and I wouldn't even go off of a, a measurement off your other one. Like your bow, other bow's a little different on the axle to axle length, so the peep position would yep. end up slightly different, so we can't just go off of that. So we'll get this out of here. This is just the divider to find the middle of the string. Mm -hmm. All right, and so what I'll have you do, we don't have a sight on here yet, so I'm just gonna stick my finger where the sight would be. Okay. I'm trying to center on my finger. I got one. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you do this, I, I want you to point like you're pointing flat down range. Don't point like steep uphill, okay. steep downhill, like you're making a 40 yard shot height kind of thing. Up or down? Up. 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 Yes. Okay, go and set it down. Now, before we pull it out, take three deep breaths, get oxygen in your yeah. system, do it again. Do it with your eyes shut, anchor in, and then when I tell you it's okay, open your eye. That's a good call. I don't think I've done that the last couple of times. Yeah. Done the second, the second round. A lot of round. times, yeah, a lot of times you just anchor in, drop back, and go, yeah, that's good. Yeah. No, well, let's check. Close your eyes. Whenever you're comfortable, go ahead and open them up. Yeah, that's it, man. We're good? Yeah. All right, cool. Okay, so now we're going to tie the peep in. And then probably give the string a twist because it's probably going to end up facing that way a little bit and we're going to want to bring it back. Is that pretty common? Yeah, I mean, anytime you put something in the string, the string's going to turn yeah. left or right. Yeah. Um, like if we stuck another peep down here for the sake of argument, the string's going to turn like that way because okay. you're changing the effective length and changing the rotation. Yeah. And when you go to serve it, it's going to turn a little bit again. Okay. So normally when I serve a string in, get done tying it in, I'll pull it out of the press and I'll grab the string and go pop, 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 pull it back three inches and let it go. Let it get a little bit of that twist out yep. and then see which way the peep's facing. Okay. And if the peep's facing this direction, I would take this string off here and give it one twist on this end. Right. If the peep's facing this way, I would still take the string off down here and give it a twist the other direction. Oh, we're going to do make that on that other one. one. Yeah. I'm tired of turning that yeah. peep over But don't do it up here because it doesn't, it doesn't, it affects it way too much. Okay. So a twist down here will probably move your string a quarter turn, your peep a quarter turn. If you did it up here, it'd be like a half or three quarter because it's much shorter to the peep here. That makes sense. So it pushes it farther. All right. So let's get some serving material. Beeswax deal still? Always. Always. And Caesar. Scissors. Yeah, use beeswax because it's tacky and it sticks. Most of your other waxes aren't that sticky, they're more slick. So you did about three feet? Mm-hmm. So that was just the, you're just going over under? Yeah, just laying over the string, serving material, wrapping it. So that's 10, and then we're going to leave that tail out. So now we're just wrapping on the string itself. We're no longer using that. Okay. You, you don't have to pull it, just leave it. So I'll give it about another five or so. That's where I get up to where the string material is starting to separate on either side of the peep. Yeah. And then I'll go up one side. All right. So now we're just going to go up the one side of it. Mm -hmm. 
once you get to the peep, go around the peep one and a half. And I'm going to flip this over by holding it with, dang it, hold it with pressure on it so I can get to this side. And then we're going to tuck it underneath the peep on this side. And pull it up to where it goes underneath and then you could let go of it and it won't come off. Huh. It's tucked under it. And then do the same wrap down the other way. Now, you'll notice I'm kind of holding the string where I want it by keeping pressure on here. Yep. enough to get around the other end. Pull about five again. Okay, now this part's a little tricky. So, you've done your last five, you're going to do your final ten, <coughs> like you did over here. You don't have to use those exact numbers, but that's typically Ish. what I use. So you'll grab the serving material, eh, six inches down, so come back over the top of the string with the excess, and then bring it inside and wrap back towards the peep. Okay, so you take that last little piece, lay it underneath the serving that you started with, and as you wrap this direction with your loop, it'll come off of the left and come to the right. And you'll end up with the same finish you started with over here. And then just take that guy, and you're always keeping pressure on it. You don't ever let it go loose. Hold your fingers, cinch it tight. You can watch it compress there. Cinch that tight. Cut it off. So now when you look at this, the peep is facing the opposite direction from where we started. So when you drew it back prior, it was square to your eye, but now it's turned because we put the peep in there and we served it. So now you're going to take it out. Two, three. Okay, so that's about where its standing resting point is going to be. So now we can twist the string to get it back to relatively square. here and one looks like it's gonna do it so mm, that's pretty close we'll probably fire it a few times see where it, if it turns a little we're gonna bring our loop back to where it lines up with our peep and then I'll have you fire this four or five times don't need the paper now Yay! I can put a sight on it and shoot it. Okay. Do you want to, uh, since we're on the subject, yeah. right now, this peep is always like, I, after I always have to yeah. turn it a little bit. So sure. you would take the bottom one and put a twist that direction. Okay. You want the soft end? I think I want Might as well do another wrap here. So we're, this is the, you were rolling? Yeah. This is the RX3, not ultra, and the peeps been twisted and I put a lot of arrows through this. For a new bow, I've shot this a lot. So you just now, will that mess with your anything? No, as long as you just adjust the string and not the cables, you didn't affect the wheel orientation. Perfect. 